How's it going everyone? It's Simon here from Empirical Health. I hope you're doing well. So in some of the past videos, we've talked about various aspects of Chinese medicine. We've gone over some of the, the correct identification of particular species and the quality of discernment associated with those species. We've talked a little bit about different methods of administration, but today we're gonna to specifically talk about dose. Uh, it's one of my obsessions and yeah, I, it has been for many, many years and still is to this day to some degree. Um, so basically there's different systems of measurements over the years of Chinese medicine, over the different dynasties, uh, specifically in the Han dynasty over 2000 years ago, there was a particular measurement system of that time, which all those formulas that we, the, the, that are foundations for Chinese medicine, they were written under this dosage strategy and, and measurement strategy. So this is incredibly important information that we need to consider when we're using these formulas in, in current day practices. Obviously, the people back in those days were different people than they are today, but that's just something we need to consider and there's you know, so much debate around this. The interesting thing is what's, what's relevant to us today uh, and we can learn from the, these past experiences. So, uh, you know, there's four types of, there's four categories basically of measurements in the Shanan Zabin Lun. So the first was a weight measurement. So what particular herb weighed with a you know scale. Um, so herbs like Xiaoyao, uh, which is split into Bai Xiao and Chu Xiao now, that was an example of a weight measurement, things like Chai Hu, all those herbs. Um, and then volume measurement. So a volume measurement was something like Ban Xia, okay, Hulma Ren, things like that. And then you had a piece measurement. So an example of that is uh, Da Xiao, Hong Xiao. And then you had a size measurement, a size of a particular bark, etc. An example of that is uh, is hopo. So in the category of weight, you had different variations of weight. So you had a ju, right, which was zero point six five gram. And then you had a fen, which was three point nine grams, and a liang, which is fifteen point six two five grams, and a jin which is 250 grams. Then you had the volume measurement. So you had a gur, which was 20, uh, 20 mil. You had a sheng, which was 200 mil. Then there was a, uh, a do, which was tw a two liters. And then a hu, which is 10 liters. Uh, in the, so the volume measure, the piece measurement. So you basically had like one piece of this, two pieces of that. Um, pills were measured in, in, term, in terms of a piece measurement or and it kind of guess, I guess it crosses over to the size measurement as well. And this, this size measurement will, like I mentioned before, hopo, for example, is measured in a, a size measurement, like a chew, like a foot long of something. So you might ask yourself how we came to, how these people came to these conclusions of this was this particular gram. Um, so this debate has been going on for a long, long time, this Liang measurement debate. And it, it varies everything between, you know, three grams up to 30 grams or even more than that, 50 grams, whatever it is. But, you know, if you start to look at the, the from an academic perspective, it says a particular measurement. And it's very, there's not much debate about volume measurements as there is the young measurements. And when, the, when there is this academic debate, it's not, doesn't seem to be really a, a debate. There might be clinical debates, but academically it's sort of like, formed an opinion um, and I was curious about this opinion when we I started to do um, started to make uh, different formulas together so when I was making Marzaren one it was really interesting because I was struck with this this situation where I had no idea what these old measurement systems meant and I'd read some of the books but didn't really I had read the modern books and it was like a gram of this 10 grams of that five grams of that but then the old texts I really wanted to look at how you make them and they have they say you know a uh, homaran has to have two sheng, and I'm thinking I don't even know what a sheng is in the first place. Uh, and then um, chu xiao, it was eight liang, and I, I have no idea what one liang is, let alone eight. And then the same with chu xiao was eight liang. I'm like that doesn't really help me any. And then xing ren, xing ren was one sheng. Okay, I knew that was half as much as the homaran, but I didn't even know what a sheng was, so that's still back to square one. Uh, and then you had da huang, uh, which was one jin. So that was, that's all great. That's 16 liang, but I don't know what a liang equals. So I don't know what a jin equals. So I'm um, back to square one. And then it was hopo, which was 
one shoe and like a foot long of a piece of bark back in the Han Dynasty. I'm like, you know, I have no idea what's going on here. So started looking into the, this, these academic papers and then it was really specific. Everyone was saying, yeah, great. One Leung equals 15.625 grams. I'm thinking that is incredibly specific number. You know, it's not like, oh yeah, it was roughly this, it was roughly that. There's like 15.625 grams. Like, isn't that worth paying some attention to? So then when I look into the modern textbooks, it said, what's this one liang? It was like three grams. That's like five times the difference. It's like three, li three grams. And then, but then, you know, then you look up wager tongue, something simple. You start with wager tongue and you go, well, there's, you know, three liang of this, three liang of that, etc., etc." But then it gets to a da sao piece. And like, well, but if you use 12 pieces of data, which it says in the classics, versus three grams for one liang, and I'm using three grams, uh, excuse me, I'm using nine grams, three times three liang of guaijia, you have this huge amount of data, what do I do? And then your teacher says, just use less data. And that makes me think, so you think that Zheng Dunjing's wrong? Or, you know, why is he using 12 pieces? Like, this is a, the master of our, this is the, foundation text of all our medicine, all our formula, all our formula architecture, etc. And you're saying to just use three gram, three, three pieces instead of 12. So I think something's off here. Uh, so started thinking about this 15.625 grams and started researching as much as possible, found in some, you know, with, with the collaboration of many colleagues around the world and, uh, you know, in Australia and around the world, started to try to figure out what they were talking about. Um, went to museums in Taiwan, in China, looked at old bells and pitch pipes and weight measurements, tried to buy stuff on antiques from Amazon and eBay and you know try to find pictures of these things and um, tried to do all this research, but really um, came up with some interesting information and found some really cool stuff to, coll to corroborate what I'm gonna talk about. So. It came down to this thing where this the 15.625 gram came back to the the this thing called a huang bell it's this ancient uh, bell that they used to dong and hit and do ceremonies around um, but to set the pitch of this bell you needed a pitch pipe right so just bear with me I know this is kind of bizarre so you need a pitch pipe so you get your pitch pipe but this how do you make a pitch pipe well you make a pitch pipe by measuring out 90 grams, excuse me, 90 grains of black broom corn millet. And then that sets the, the, the size of the pitch pipe. And then you put inside the pitch pipe 1200 pieces of this black broom corn millet. And that is the size of where you cut your black, your pitch pipe to get the pitch for the bell to do your ceremonies. Now, 1200, 1,200 pieces of black broom corn millet weigh 12 Jew. And, and 24 Jew equal one liang. So if you know the weight of 1,200 black broom corn millet, then you know what equals half a liang, you double that and you get one liang. This is how it was worked out. I know it's a roundabout way. So I just thought, well, let's find some black broom corn millet. So became obsessed with black broom, broom called millet, found a whole bunch, um, measured it, got the 90 pieces, cool, okay, it equals this chur, everything, and then uh, 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 weighed it all out, counted them all out, 1,200 pieces, weighed it. It weighed uh, exactly half a, uh, a liang, which is 7.825, something close to that, right? Um, double that is 15.625, right? It was spot on and it was like, that is so cool. So um, that was, yeah, an authoring. And so now it's time to put that that confirmation into, into trying practice in different ways, different formulas, etc. And think about why it's really, really important. It is important because we, not only can we learn so much from that information, but we can also, um, uh, look at those formulas and say, well, I, I, I see why it's important. One of the main things that's important is the ratio of herbs. So when you've got um, different different formulas, you've got different weight systems together with other weight systems. 
So you can't just say it's not just one part of this, one part of that, one part of this. It's different. So for example, um, Wen Jing Tang. It's a Sheng measurement, so a volume measurement versus uh, yeah, volume measurement versus a Liang measurement, which is a weight measurement. So you need to have both of those correlate. Um, and it baffles me why some of the formulas, when you look at this formula, like a bun sha is, is bun sha and mine and dong are the, are the volume measurements, the sheng measurements. But in many formulas, that they're exactly the same. But it clearly says in the texts, half of a sheng of bun sha and one sheng of mine and dong. So mine and dong should be double the dose of bun sha. You have a look at your textbook and you'll see it, the variations of that interpretation. Not only that, that measurement compared to the weight measurement. So if your sheng measurement's off, your liang measurement's off, what are you going to have? The second is, is example of uh, Guanzhi Tang, you know, something so simple as, as I mentioned before, the piece measurement, the 3 versus 12 versus the Yang measurement, 3 versus 15.625. Okay, if that's not right, I mean, it probably would be right if you got 3 grams versus 3 pieces, but what are you trying to do? Are you trying to do the classics or are you just trying to do a modern interpretation? I, it's, there's not much checks, not many checks and balances in that system. Um, the, the, the other example is, is, is when you have a Liang measurement versus a Sheng measurement and versus a piece measurement. So an example of that is Xiao Chai Hu Tang. So Xiao Chai Hu Tang has a, uh, you know, Chai Hu Huang Qin, for example, are weight measurement, Liang measurements. And the Ban Sha is a volume measurement. And then the Da Cao is piece measurement. So if your piece measurement, your Sheng measurement, or your Liang measurement off, your ratios are off again. Uh, and then you have the example when you have the Liang or the Jin measurement, the volume measurement versus the Sheng measurement versus the size measurement. So as I mentioned before, whole pole being the size of a, uh, like the, the, the foot of a, a whole pole. So again, you know, when they're, when they're off, they cause all sorts of problems. So it's important, something to consider that those ancient measurement systems were there in, in place and they teach us so much more about the formulas. They teach us so much more about the architecture around the formulas and so much more about the clinical application of those formulas. For example, if you take those volume measurements, you can calculate how much something's supposed to be taken for. Not so much in a decoction, but certainly in a powder or a pill. Because Zhang Jing says very varying degrees of what a volume measurement is for the powders and the pills. So he's saying, you know, this is the total of this formula. So does that indicate that that's how long you're supposed to have it for? Because you can have this much of something and take it for this amount of time, or you can have that much something and take it for this amount of time. So that actually is very informative, very, very important information. It can treat, treat it can Give you examples of treatment strategy and and, and um, the progression of a disease and how long it takes to cure something how long something's intended to be taken for very very fascinating information so again in summary correct identification correct quality discernment administration and dosage once we have all those things and we consider all those things coupled with our diet good diagnostic skills we're going to get the best clinical outcome so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's been informative to some degree. If you have any questions, and I'm sure there are some, uh, please let us know and happy to answer them. In the meantime, hope you stay well and see you next time.